Hello, brothers and sisters. Michael, humble seeker of truth for rapture and apocalypse. 19 seconds to midnight. Uh, we're going to review a little bit and then uh, take a look at uh, just a, a yet more ways that God has confirmed out the timing of the season of our Lord's return um, that we know as the rapture and the beginning of judgment, the trumpet judgments known as Jacob's trouble or great tribulation. So I've uh, prepped my mobile recording studio and uh, didn't get the lighting quite right, but uh, we'll do what we can with what we have. <laughs> um, okay, so a little bit of review. Psalm 90. We've talked about this a lot. I'm going to say it again. So it's where God tells us to apply our hearts unto wisdom. And that wisdom is learning to number our days re returning regarding the return of our Lord. Return, O Lord, how long? <clears throat> uh, psalm 90. Anyway, uh, then he gives us two ways in that psalm to do that very thing. Uh, he says, when a thousand years becomes yesterday in thy sight, and by doing that, he's able to use the years in the Gregorian calendar. Uh, he, will multi, he will glorify himself on multiple calendars, is glorifying himself on multiple calendars. And so the way those numbers work, he knew how it would be used and he marks it out that way. So that has to do with the year. So the other way is Israel's age. Psalm 90, verse 10. 70 years, the days of our years are 70. If by reason of strength they be 80, yet those years, those 10 years are labor and sorrow. But soon they're cut off and we fly away. They don't get to be 80. Uh, Matthew 24, 22, or no flesh would survive. Yes, that's exactly what it pertains to. Anyway, uh, so we have two numbers that coincide. You know, as we talk about numbers, ah, oh, man, there's so many numbers. Well, gosh, they all mean something. And, you know, you could look at any number, and, I mean, you're going to come up with something with it. Well, yes and no. <laughs> so... Yes, and that's true. The you know, especially when we start looking at Strong's, every number ha means something up until we run out of numbers. Eighty six hundred, I think, or eighty four hundred in the Old Testament, some eight thousand something. Fifty six twenty four, I think, in the New Testament, thirteen thousand some numbers. They're associated with the words, but. Yeah, they all mean something, but it's when they mean something regarding applying our hearts unto wisdom, learning to number our days regarding the return of our Lord. Then then it's time to like, oh, wow, let's pay attention to that. So he uses both those ways so those numbers come together. And so when Israel is 71 in 2019, 19 and 71, and so we see this uh, coupling and um, and we go from there. Uh, when they're 74 in 2022, uh, lost sheep. So um, anyway, 19th letter of Hebrew. He also uses the Hebrew language. And the 19th letter has a value of 100 because it does represent the 100 sheep. And it is this. And... Uh, it's divided in two. It's a circle, full circle, 360. God uses that many ways. And divided, showing that it's a two-part gathering. Not just one, two. It's a three-part gathering, but one was a couple thousand years ago. It's the harvest model. It's the temple model. Once you start leaving the fact that God communicates in everything he does it in creation he does it in the physical harvest he tells him to model the temple after the pattern in heaven holy of holies outer court and 
or inner court and uh, court of the Gentiles. It's the point that it's a three-part model, okay? <clears throat> First fruits, main harvest, corners and gleanings. It's very simple. So the, the two gatherings at the end, he's declared the end from the beginning, are represented by the 19th order of Hebrew. Why did he use 19? And why did he give it a value of 100? Well, we just talked about the 100. And the 19 is 2019. We're going to see. Okay. He also is the creator of mathematics. And so there are... It's about relationship. It's about a father and his family. And so he made universal constants of relationship. Phi, pi, golden ratio. We've talked about them before. Just in review. Phi, which by the way, phi means fly. And we're about to. Okay, and it's this symbol. Wow, doesn't it look like that? Yeah, because he's ever painting the same picture over and over and over. How about pi? Well, gosh, the pi doesn't look like that. But the relationship does. It's the relationship of the, the diameter of a circle to its circumference. Both of those, phi and pi, they are infinite decimals. They go on forever. Because it shows an eternal kingdom. It is gorgeously beautiful. As is our Father and our Lord. Glory to God. Alright, so how is that represented in the Word? And we're just going to touch on this. But uh, let's start in Daniel 12. We're going to see... Uh, we're going to pick up a couple diamonds on the trail today once again. Hopefully you feel that way. Daniel 12, verse 6. Let me uh, adjust my position here. <clears throat> and one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? Let's start up in verse 5, my, my bad. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, one on this side of the bank of the river and one on that side of the bank of the river. And it's really more like this, one on this side and one on that side. The river in the middle and our Lord standing on it. And then he said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters, how long shall it be? And he said, a time, time, and half a time. Well, that's moed, moed, it's divine appointment, divine appointment, appointed time, and appointed time, and a half. And we've talked about that. So, not our focus today, directly anyway. So I wanted a couple of, cover a couple of challenging verses um, not challenging at all actually just misunderstood greatly misunderstood by some who would uh, say the same thing regarding me, me but let's celebrate that he is the way the truth the life okay if we disagree on some of these things let's just walk in love let's walk in love second Thessalonians 2. This section is so very simple, and I, it's made so complex by many. Uh, but let's let's look at why, and then how numbers confirm it. <laughs> also amazing. I love you guys. Now we beseech you, brethren, regarding the coming of our Lord Jesus and our gathering together unto him. That you soon you not be soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter is from us, is that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. 
except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition or lawlessness. So many, very many, um, and some scholars just, this is often taught that this is, uh, it's the word apostasia, and uh, it's where we get the word apostasy, and so many teach that it is a falling away of the church, or a falling away in general from God and godliness. Um, and very, certainly that has happened and is taking place before our eyes. And uh, I'm not saying it's not true. It's just not exactly what it means. And I'll show you why. We, we can't just single stuff out. Okay, the word literally means departure. Okay, well, that still makes sense. But the, the, we have to take it in context, okay? And it's defined specifically in a moment. <laughs> okay. Let no man deceive you. That day shall not come except there come a departure and the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now, verse 6, you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now lets will let until he be taken out of the way. That's a rough translation. It's literally... Um, for the mystery of lawlessness doth already work, only he who now restrains will restrain until he be taken out of the way. God Almighty is the restrainer. He is the Holy Spirit. He's holy and he's spirit. He is the Holy Spirit. He gives the gift of Holy Spirit that in the believer, since the day of Pentecost, is called the Spirit of Christ. Spirit of Christ in you. God in Christ in you. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. God in Christ in you. And that is a restraint against evil. We have power and authority over the power of the devil and over darkness. And so God's going to remove that straight. He says, I'm going to hide my face from them and see what their latter end shall be. Verse 7, the mystery of lawlessness doth already work, only he who now restrains will restrain and until he be taken out of the way, that's the departure. Per this section of scripture, that's the literal departure it's talking about. The restraint's got to be removed, which is the believers, because it is God in Christ in the believers. And then, verse 8, and then, and then. Shall that wicked one be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming? That's the result of it. So it's not that it happens all that day. Okay, the wicked one comes onto the world stage, is revealed. Doesn't mean he isn't messing around right now. <clears throat> Just isn't revealed yet. Then that wicked one shall be revealed after the restraint is removed. It's so plain and simple. So look at verse 7 again, since I read it a few times already. Um, he who now restrains will restrain until he be taken out of the way. Well, that sounds a lot, uh, sounds a lot like the child shall be caught up unto God and to his throne. Snatched away. Harpazo. It's not the same word, but it is the same mindset. The, chat, the restraint will be taken out of the way. Glory to God. <clears throat> so, in Strong's, a um, couple interesting things that's going to lead us down a path today. Um, 
We beseech you, brethren, regarding the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know, have you heard of Ron Wyatt? Guy, uh, I mean, I haven't done a ton of research on him. I, But I have seen that apparently or supposedly he found the uh, uh, several things, um, including Noah's Ark and um, the Ark of the Covenant. Some really uh, interesting things about him finding the Ark of the Covenant. I don't know. I wasn't there. Um, but where he found it was under where Christ was crucified. And apparently it is said that the blood dripped into the ground and through that, because the Ark was underground, and went on to the mercy seat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, if that's true, that is uh, off the chart cool. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. They tested that blood, supposedly, and it had 20 four chromosomes because it had it had God's and Mary's God's one and Mary's 23 normal human blood has 46 23 from the man 23 from the woman and it is said to prove that it is Christ's blood again I have no way of verifying or substantiating any of that I just listened to a video but I find it interesting that Jesus, in this verse, 2 Thessalonians 2.1, is Strong's number 2424. It's used, by the way, 975 times because in 2075, we, 9 is divine order. And 75 is when Israel is 75 in 2023 when the tabernacle of God is with men. And Revelation 21 tells us the, that God and Christ are the holy of holies of it. It's beautiful. Gathering together in that verse, regarding our gathering together unto him, is Strong's number 1997. It's 19, 2019, 99, 99 sheep and seven spiritual completion and perfection. All right, in verse 7, letteth or restrain is used 19 times. <clears throat> Until he be taken out of the way, out of the way is Strong's number 3319. Uh, 33 means a couple things. It is Father is help and oh, so he is it also means come that uh let's go to james 5 1 it's only uh used it's used four times i believe certainly we get the mind picture of come lord jesus but it has another picture or another meaning. James 5 1, 51. That's the wall, isn't it? And there's our come Lord Jesus. Go, James 5 1, go to now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. See, that day of the Lord has, uh, you go in here, you're going to worship the one true God through his son, Jesus Christ, or you're going to worship the other thing that's coming and go into destruction. And it paints both aspects of that. 33, 19. And uh, that, uh, so taken, we talked about, out of the way. It's it's the word missos sure I'm butchering the pronunciation 
but it means middle or midst taken out of the middle or midst what now this is new testament it's going to be a different word in the old testament but where do we see that mm. daniel 9 27 when in the midst of the week the covenant with many is broken and it ties those things together Daniel 12, 7, also. Should have kept my finger in Daniel. We read that where it's, uh, how long? A time, pointed time, a pointed time, and a half. Same word. Half, midst. Strong's 2677 in the Old Testament. They both mean middle or midst. Can also mean among. Strong's number 3319. You know, 19 in Strong's is intrinsic goodness. Four times in Christ. It also means slaughter. So where else do we see this uh, Strong's number 3319? Will it tell us something? Yes. <laughs> that was a rhetorical question. Uh, let's go to Matthew 25. Verse 6, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Oh, that's 24. My bad. That is not the verse. It's Matthew 25, 6. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go you out to meet him. The word midnight is Strong's number 3319. Go you out to meet him. <clears throat> that couples with Strong's number 3571. There we have our 19 and our 71. 71 years old in 2019. Strong's number 35, by the way. So it's 3319 is coupled with 3571. I like breaking these down. It gives us wisdom. Strong's 35 is the word caperberry. What? It's used one time in the word of God. Tell you what, when God uses something one time, check it out. It literally means desire. It's in one place in the Word of God, and that is in Ecclesiastes. Right after Proverbs. It's Ecclesiastes 12. Well, 12 is our full circle on the menorah. Another conversation. <clears throat> Verse 5. And when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fears or terrors shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish or blossom, the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail. Desire shall fail. That's that word caperberry. Well, what happens in this verse? He tells us why there's terror and desire fails. Because man goes to his long home. That's eternal home. And the mourners about the streets.
strong 71 is to carry. You remember uh, John 21? It's not the same word, actually. Same picture, carry, to bring. John 21, 18. When you were young, you carried yourself where you wanted. When you're old, another will carry you to where you can't carry yourself. Next verse, 19, follow me. Verse 22, follow me. Stuff all ties together. By the way, Strong's number 71 is used 69 times. You know what that word is? Stone. You know where we see that? In Daniel 2, 34, 35, 45. And a stone was cut out without hands and smote the beast. Let's check out Matthew 13. Just going to look at a few of these. It's not going to be a super long. Oh, no. We're a half hour in already. How time flies when you're having fun. I am anyway. God's word is so fun. It's so beautiful. It's so amazing. It is so truth, light, life, power. Glory to God. What if we didn't have it? What if he didn't give it? But he did because he wants us to know. <laughs> Matthew 13, verse 49. So shall it be at the end of the world. That, world, that word world is age. So shall it be at the end of the age. The angels shall come forth, come forth and sever the wicked from among the just that uh so shall it be is 2071 we've talked about 20 a lot ties to jacob his wives and the cattle serving 20 years full circle 360 years 71 2071 i mean <laughs> israel 71 wow Sever is interesting, okay? It's the number 4190. But what is he doing here? Severs the wicked from among the just, from the midst of the just. It's 19 in 40. 40 representing 40-day warning, judgment coming, four points in time. That gets a little more complicated. Three points in time. Leave that alone. <laughs> 40. 19 in the middle of it. He's severing the righteous and the wicked. There's a division among the Jews. John 10, 19. The good shepherd. Two in the field. One gone. One into destruction. And on and on. The word among or midst is 3319. Luke 2120. And when you shall see, let's read a couple verses here. When you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let them not, and let them, and let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto, for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. In verse 21, that word midst. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. 3319. 
John, 20, verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, 33, 19, and said, Peace be unto you. It's John 20, 19. Again, 20 times 360 is 7,200. We've talked about that a bunch. Gives us a 21-day window. From when a thousand years became yesterday in thy sight and as a watch in the night. January 1st, 2000. January 21st, 2000. 7,200 days later. It's also 10 plus 10. 10 is court and session verdict rendered. Okay? Daniel 7.10 gives us some insight into that. 10 days of awe. 10 plagues. It's points in time. Three-part harvest model. There's three points in time. 20 is the second one, which were, is about upon us. Verdict rendered. You're going here, you're going there. It's, it's constant. Same picture over and over. And it is also the other way. 19, 2019. Revelation 1. A few more minutes here. We'll close with some very cool stuff. John, Revelation 1, verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, the menorah, one like the sun, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and gird about, paps, with a golden girdle. In the midst, he walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, also Revelation 2, 1. That word midst is 3319. Strong's 3319. Come, Lord Jesus, in 19. And he's in the midst. Okay? He's in the midst, gathering the 99 sheep. He'll come back for the lost sheep in 2022. Revelation 7 17. This is another verse uh, that, or in this section, often misunderstood. Let's read, uh, let's start with verse uh, 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and where did they come from? Verse 14, and I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Well, that seems to say these guys went through the great tribulation. No. It, it seems to say it, but it doesn't. That word, out of, is literally away from. They came away from the great tribulation. We are saved from the wrath to come. It's away from the great tribulation. They came away from it. They didn't go through it. That's the lost sheep. Everybody, won't, not everybody. It's a terrible thing to say. A lot of folks want to try to fit every verse regarding the return of the Lord into one gathering. And it brings no end to confusion. Let's keep going. These are they that came away from the great tribulation, have washed their robes, made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. Glory to God. And he that sits on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, thirst no more, neither shall the sun light on them nor heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto fountains of waters. 
and God shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes. The Lamb which is in the midst of the throne. Strong's number 3319. Look at verse 14. This is Revelation 7, 14. Uh, let me do something. Okay, so this is the river, 19th letter Hebrew. Phi, relationship of pi. Seven is spiritual completion and perfection. It also means to destroy, destruction. Seven seals, you're going there, you're going into destruction. Seven trumpets, you're going there, or you're going into destruction. Revelation 7.14, why is it 7.14? Well, seven is seven seals. 14 is seven seals, seven trumpets. And it's 7.14 because this is the river. Guy on this side. Guy on, guy on this side. Guy on that side. All right, let's close in Matthew 18. Verse 20. By the way, Strong's uh, 3319. That equals 52, doesn't it? Offspring. Heirs. Matthew 1820. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Two or three gathered in my name. The first one, the first fruits, was with Christ 2,000-ish years ago. Behold the hand. Behold the nail. Two gatherings at the end. God declared the end from the beginning. So, the guy on this side of the river is the two. The guy, the lost sheep, is the three in the mouth of two or three witnesses. He is in the midst of them. When two or three are gathered, he is in the midst of them. Brought in that other verse accidentally. Same thing. God bless you guys. Thanks for listening. These numbers can get confusing. Um, we must apply caution to them, but uh, certainly they can shed light, give direction and understanding. Glory to God. Blessings to you.